the most important impact would be on the outlook for their future. Uh, because anybody who's, uh, say, under 24 at the moment, maybe going in to do their leaving cert next year or the year after, coming out of college, their biggest problem is uncertainty. Uh, uncertainty about what to do in terms of maybe picking a course of study, and then the bigger uncertainty about getting a job. The critical thing is that if we do agree to pass the referendum, we will have access to a specific fund of money called the European Stability Mechanism of 700 billion. Um, that's quite important because after 2013, as we exit um, the Troika programme, uh, we have to basically fund ourselves on the markets uh, or if we couldn't fund ourselves on the market look for someone else to fund us and the better uh, marked Ireland is in financial terms uh, which would uh, be very positive in terms of being able to access the ESM uh, then the cheaper the funding is likely to be all of the things being equal it's more that this is if you like one more building block on the road to putting Ireland in a better place uh, which hopefully then will benefit exactly that age group that you're talking about now and in particular gives them hope for the future. Um, the other issue of course I implicit in this treaty is that the countries in the Eurozone should uh, put their houses in order in relation to debt but if you don't end up with a balanced budget cycle um, what happens is you borrow money and that money is repaid by the next generation who go to work. So if we can sort out our house now, again, in general terms, it will benefit um, the next generation who go to work because they will find that they've less of a burden of debt than they otherwise might have. Okay. Uh, specifically, uh, yeah. what the yes vote uh, will have for young people uh, between that age is essentially to ensure that in 2014 and 2015 we have access to funding uh, to pay for public services and education in particular, health um, and other areas. Uh, so for young people who are at school for example, uh, it's to ensure that we keep our schools going, that we have the salaries to pay the teachers, that we have resources to pump into the schools. Notwithstanding all the cuts that have occurred, the bottom line is we need about 18 billion in 2014. 10 billion to, co to cover a deficit, that is the gap between what we raise in taxes and what we spend on services, and 8 billion to repay a maturing loan. Now we either get that money from the markets or we get it to the new uh, European Stability Mechanism Fund. Um, the markets, we may be able to get it there, we may not. But the Stability Fund, we can and definitely will get access to that if we vote yes. That's a practical outcome of the yes vote. More generally for young people, um, the set of rules that we're signing up to in this treaty and we're asking every member of state or we're being asked to sign up to will basically give confidence to the euro currency and will underpin external investment and confidence in Europe and in Ireland. That's a good thing for jobs, ultimately. Um, it's a general point but it's a very important point. Confidence in the euro uh, means that young people in school today or young people uh, who might be unemployed now or indeed young people in work, uh, their chances are improved if we can take measures uh, that increase confidence uh, in Europe generally and in Ireland. Now, it's only one step. It's not to be all and end all of everything, and it's not going to solve all our problems. But we do think it's an important step in the right direction. We agree with the common set of rules that were agreed before, and we definitely agree with the idea of having access, definite access, to funding at cost um, in 2014-2015. Well, first of all, can I say that this is a choice uh, more important for young people than for anybody else, because this is about what their country is going to look like in three years' time, or five years' time, or ten years' time. Um, it's about, it's part of the process of trying to rebuild a broken economy, and in some ways a broken society. You know, we made some terrible mistakes as a country, both politically, from a banking perspective, from a debt perspective, uh, um, during the so-called Celtic Tiger period. Uh, and we're now having to correct that and fix that mess. Uh, and so this treaty won't solve all of Ireland's problems, but it is an important part of that journey. What this does is it signs any future Irish government up to responsible budgeting, which is a good thing. Uh, because Ireland, unfortunately, over the last 30 years has had a boom and bust economy. We've had huge growth and then a collapse. Huge growth and then another collapse. Because governments have overspent money that they can't afford to spend. 
This treaty is about preventing that across the European Union to bring stability and balance so that we can create sustainable, steady growth in the Irish economy and job creation to go with that. And secondly, it's about accessing emergency funds if we need it. At the end of next year, Ireland will no longer have emergency funds from the IMF and the EU. And so we'll have to raise our own money again, um, which is a good thing because that will be a return to proper sovereignty for Ireland. Um, but if we can't raise the kind of money that we need, uh, this treaty allows us to access a pool of money that's been put in place for fragile economies that are trying to recover at the moment if we need it. And that's a safety net that if we vote no, we won't have. So this is about building a country that can provide jobs for our young people in the future, that can provide an exciting and positive future for people. Uh, and, uh, and this treaty will do uh, some of that work for us, not all of it, we need to do a lot of other things as well. Uh, um, but, but that's why I, I, I'm so sort of passionate about trying to talk to young people about why this is important for them, because it's more important for them than for their parents in many ways.